Okay. Well, as I said, I'm really sorry I'm not there. I, I, it would have been lovely to come last year. We had great plans. Um, this year, my team is very busy here in Australia. We're about to run our next National Church Life Survey, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Um, I sometimes get asked, you know, about the role of research and pastoral evaluation particularly, and what the place that has in church life. And one of the, my responses is, um, I'm a sociologist, I'm not a theologian. However, I bring, I'm a Christian, and part of what I say is I bring the gifts that God has given me to participate in God's mission to bring about the kingdom of God. So in a way, it's like you can see me as the hand, the foot, whatever part of the body you like, but I am part of the body of Christ, bringing the gifts and skills I have to serve God's kingdom. So that's, a, that's, that's one response you can, I can give as a, as a researcher, as a sociologist. I'm going to speak about our Australian National Church Life Surveys, which has been a long journey of, of evaluation. And what is the role of research in church life? In a sense, I'm going to summarise it uh, just on this screen. There are many reasons that our churches take part in evaluation. One of them is because they use it as a point to think about the future. They use it to plan, to uh, evaluate what they're doing and to think about strategy, to do course corrections, to say, I'm going this way, uh, how can I improve? Another way, reason is they say, um, using surveys, which is what we use, particularly, or focus groups or whatever it is you use, is a way to listen to every voice, not just the loud ones, not just the ones up the front, but the people who are new, the people on the edges, the children, the young people. It's a way of listening. Uh, the moving forward together is when you actually listen to many voices, uh, the leadership can say, we have heard you and therefore together as a community, as a collective, we can move forward. Uh, evaluation and research allows us to ask difficult questions. And that's another uh, useful thing uh, to say, look, we have this difficult thing we need to speak about together and research and evaluation allows you to um, put the difficult question to the people and, and listen to what they have to say. I'm gonna share with you a little bit about the Catholic Church in Australia and one of the benefits of conducting research over a long period of time is you can look at emerging trends. And I will actually focus on that part today as a as give you a little example to say, here's what we have seen in terms of patterns over time trends and understand the big picture. It's stepping back and saying, when you get focused on every day in church life, focused on the, the small things, um, sometimes you, you lose the perspective. And when you step back to evaluate, you can see what we would say, the big picture. When we think about evaluation, we often talk about the fact that there are, there are two ways, two simple ways to think about this. There was a big focus, particularly from the US, on church growth, that you were healthy as a church if you uh, were growing in number. That's nice and easy because it's one measure. You just count the heads. Another head, is the number going up or down? And this is one way of understanding, uh, is this a healthy church? Uh, and that is a legitimate way because in Matthew, you know, we're sent to go make disciples. And if you make disciples, you will see numbers go up. It's a legitimate way to assess. However, there were many people who pushed against this idea of, just counting heads, counting the numbers and watching them go up and down. And in Australia, we were one of them. And we said, there's some, it's more than just growth or decline. It's actually about the quality of church life. And we were uh, pushing to think about vitality and to listen to many people and their perspective. And if you look at the literature, many studies have been done on church health there will be common themes that come up and you can see some of them listed. And those are the kinds of things that when you say, when you think of a healthy church, of a healthy parish, tell me what you imagine, what do you see? And if we did that, we would come up with the same words over and over. 
all around the world, we will come up with the same ideas, I would, I would guess. Um, and I guess I, I just mentioned the, the, the theme there is John 10.10, 10, life to the full. I've come that you might have life and have it to the full, abundant life. And church health picks up that abundance across different measures. So what does NCLS research do here in Australia? We understand church health. Our model is to think about it uh, as something the church is trying to achieve. You know a church is healthy if it is achieving these goals. And so we say, I know a church is healthy if I can see it helping people in their relationship. Three ways, relationship with God, does this church help people grow in their relationship with God? Relationship with each other? And relationship with the wider community beyond the gathered community to wider. So three sets of relationship. Another key is that healthy churches are um, sustainable. And that is you aren't declining. You can't stay healthy if your numbers are going down and down. So it is something to look at. The other thing we have found is healthy churches have vital leadership and directions for the future. We've developed this idea of qualities and have these nine core qualities and we've grouped them and I won't speak about them in detail, but that's a way of symbolizing that it's not just about one thing, that in a sense, we're looking at a system, a healthy system of church life. And there are many ways and angles. And for some churches, some parts of that system will be more important. We also have found that when you change one part, another part changes. And so that's important to see how they relate together. So let me now apply this to the Catholic Church in Australia. Uh, this is information collected by the Australian Catholic Bishops Conference. And if you look at the numbers, we know in Australia, it is similar to, to Europe and the US, that the numbers, the percent of Australians who identify as Catholic has gone down in our national census. The uh, mass attendance has gone down and the number of parishes has gone down. So this is where our church life survey comes in. And our church life survey is a tool that one parish can do, but we also have this five yearly national church life survey, which is a real gift. And I have been part of this team that's been running national church life surveys for 30 years now. I was just a child when we started really. <laughs> um, but we've been doing it for 30 years, which makes this the largest, longest running survey of its kind in the world. We're a small nation, we only have 24 million people. And so it's possible and for us to do a national church life survey. And the goals are to encourage vitality, to connect churches with their community and to strengthen effective and sustainable leadership practices. And in that church life survey, we've had a sample of Catholic parishes that, we've, that I'm going to use now when I give you some Catholic results as an as a example. Um, but this is interesting. And while this pandemic's happening, so we, this is our census year, we're going to have the church life survey. And when the pandemic happened, I thought, oh, that's it. We, it's gone. We can't do it. 30 years, it's over. What has happened, and this is, I guess, about the value of evaluation. Our denominational leaders across 20 Protestant, Catholic, Anglican, Pentecostal, everybody, they have said, and the local churches have said, now more than ever, it is important to stop and listen. We have to hear from our people. We don't know where they are. We don't know how they're going in their faith. It's really important this time. So even while churches are in lockdown, meeting online, they are going to take part. And as of today, I have 350,000 surveys ordered um, from 3,000 churches who are going to do our survey starting in November. So this to me says they are valuing this as a tool for listening and they are hungry for what we're going to tell them about the health of the church. 
just quickly, if you're interested, the way it will work is we do a consultation. A church then says, I would like 100 survey forms, please. I would like it in these different languages. We translate to nine different languages. Uh, we're a very multicultural nation. The churches will do the survey in, uh, at, the, at the end of mass or um, maybe online, and they will complete the surveys, paper online, send it back to us, we process. Then every local church who takes part will get their own results, local results. Every presbytery will get presbytery reports. Every diocese will get diocesan reports. Every synod, whichever de denomination you are, whichever structure you have, will get your reports. And then nationally, we will create a national combined report. So all the leadership at different levels will receive reports. And this is some of the, the reasons that we give uh, to why churches should take part. I won't read them all out, but you can see there's a range of um, things that we say, why should you do this survey? Why should you do it in your local church? Interrupt your mass or, you know, add to your mass. Like we say, shorten the time for mass and then do this at the end, do it all together. Uh, and this is the best way for people to feel heard. All right, now I'm going to go quite quickly, but I'll give you a little taste of some of the results. This is 20 years of results about the Catholic Church in Australia. What do we learn when we stop and run a church life survey? So we already know about the numbers, but what we also learn, for example, is something about who goes, who are the mass attenders? And so we have learned, well, all these charts show 1996 through to 2016, 20 years. So just look at the lines. Are they going flat, down or up? So I can look at this very quickly and say, the number of women and men has been the same over the last 20 years, but levels of university education, much higher. So this says to leadership, you are speaking to a much more educated group of people. We also know that they are aging. The yellow line is 2016, much older than uh, 20 years earlier. And that's a key driver for the future that the church is aging. The other driver this is important here in Australia and the message we've been able to bring is there's increasing ethnic diversity in Catholic parishes. And in fact, Catholic churches are the most multicultural in Australia. Half of all Catholic parishes are multicultural. And we're saying, if you want to look to the future, understand the great multicultural uh, mix that you have and that this is a possible strength for you. So be attentive to it. How can you harness this and make this part of a, a vibrant future? Because look at the proportion of, in our context, non-English speaking people uh, in your parishes. So this is like a, we don't know unless we ask them. So now if we come to the, the health questions, let me walk through quite quickly. Firstly, we have learned that parishes are, continue to help people to grow in their faith. And there are higher proportions now of Catholic attenders who say, my parish is helping me grow in my faith than there was when we started to do this survey. This is encouraging. We also see that parish uh, mass attenders, uh, there's an upward trend when you ask them about their experience of worship. Uh, of music, of preaching, of God's presence, all of those lines are going up. So that's a positive message for the church. We see that belonging, when we ask about relationship with each other, we see belonging is stable with a bit of an increase. So that's a positive story. We see involvement in groups. Are they relating to each other in groups, um, in small groups? Uh, we see that as stable. Now, we would say, healthy churches often use small groups as a way to help people relate to each other. So one message for the Catholic Church is you are not growing your small group involvement. This could be something for you to look at because we know that having places where people can gather and, and build relationship in small groups is a positive thing. So it's like mm, something to think about, something to work on. Now we look at reaching out beyond ourselves. So healthy churches help people in their relationship with God, with each other, and with the wider community. So we can say to the Catholic Church, 
you have many more people helping others beyond themselves in informal ways. This is encouraging. Another message we give them, though, is that uh, involvement in groups in the community serving by doing, you know, uh, being the hands and feet of Christ, serving in active ways, involvement in the community is stable. But involvement in groups that the church runs has gone up. So it's like uh, maybe rather than joining the community more, the church is saying, we'll just set up our, it's a soup kitchen or something, you know, um, I don't know what an equivalent is, but we'll do it ourselves. And so perhaps there's been a bit of a retreat and the churches are saying, we'll do, we'll, we might set up our own thing and reach out that way rather than joining what it, the community is doing. So that's um, perhaps a, something to think about. We see uh, that sharing faith, evangelization has actually increased. There's an, people are at ease with sharing their faith. And this is encouraging. The Catholic Church in Australia has put a lot of work in with the decade of evangelization, a lot of training, uh, and they can see some fruit for that focus. Finally, you come to positioning for the future. We know that healthy churches are ones that have a culture of collective confidence. There's a collective engagement. There's a clarity about who we are together and that we're committed to a future together. You can say a lot more about this, but let me just quickly go through. We can see that there's been um, stable levels of commitment to vision but confidence has gone up a bit. So that's a good sign that there's a bit more confidence. We see that uh, uh, those encouraged to be in leadership and offer, offer roles has also been stable. Again, that would be good to see that going up, that people are em empowered to contribute their gifts and skills. Here's the big one, though. Finally, a healthy parish is one that is open to new possibilities. And we can encourage the Catholic Church in Australia by saying there are many more people, a higher proportion of your mass attenders are saying they are open to something new. So as you move forward, be encouraged, whether or not, you know, some people don't always believe this, but there's a positive message to say they are telling you they are ready to try something new. And this is an important way to have a conversation. So that brings me to the end of, of a little sample of how we use our evaluation, uh, feed it back locally, but also to the diocese and also to the bishops conference as well, for them to see uh, not only the numbers, but also the health of um, the church.